Hello, Empowered Birth community. I just wanted to let you know that I have gotten the proof of my book. Obviously, I'm going to have to fix the cover. That was a learning curve. I'm learning this stuff. And it didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted. So I'll be fixing that. But soon you will be able to have your very own copy. If you were worried about this book being too thick and having too much to read, like look how short it is. You could read this in an afternoon or in a few hours. In fact, it only took me about six hours to edit it and format it and fix it up the first time I went through it. After that, it took me a lot less. What's really important about this book isn't how long it is or how long it's going to take you to get through it, though. What really sets this book apart is that it has action steps to take. So there's going to be exercises for you to do inside this book in chapters uh, six and seven. And these are all about getting the birth you want without having to fight, beg or compromise. It's basically like me coaching you. But first, I wanted to give you a little sneak peek of this book. So here, if you want to know what the chapters are, first of all, I'll tell you what, what the names of the chapters are. So over here, there's the introduction. We have the natural birth traps, why birth goes wrong, a harsh lesson where I tell you the story of my son's birth and all of the mistakes I made and what I could have done differently so that you can understand from the story point of view, and I teach mostly through story, but you also kind of get the idea of where I went wrong. Then reclaiming birth, where I talk about my daughter's home birth and the lessons that I had and how I applied my system. We have the five pillars of empowered birth, where I'm basically going to walk you through an overview of how to make these five pillars work and put them all together. Because remember, you need all five optimized to have an empowered birth. Then these are the best chapters, okay? It's how to get the birth you want the first time. But if you're a second time mom, I encourage you to still read that chapter and do the exercises because it will help you to see where you might have went wrong before, what traps you fell into, and you'll be able to recognize and heal at the same time and realize, oh, it's not me. It's actually this other thing that happened. So it's a very encouraging chapter. And I walk through my, I walk my clients through this. Then we have how to heal and get the birth you want the next time. So then this is how you basically do what I did with my daughter and think, okay, where did I go wrong? What do I not want to experience again? What did I want this time? And you're going to have that roadmap. Those are the longest chapters out of the whole book because they have the exercises and the whole overview of the Empowered Birth Five Pillar System. Finally, we have the final thoughts. And then after that, we have some resources at the back of the book. We have the acknowledgement section and just about the author. So I did put some resources in the back of the book for other accounts that you can follow, books that I found to be most helpful in getting the right education, and just websites that you might want to take advantage of. Some of them are from birth workers that I have admired and followed for years and who actually inspired me on my empowered birth journey. So the thing is about this book is it's not a typical birth book. There's nothing on dilation. There's nothing on cervix checks. There's really nothing about labor stages either because this is your roadmap to getting the birth you want. And if you're trying to go by the textbook definition of labor, that doesn't work. You need to be able to birth intuitively and you're going to follow your own plan and your body is going to follow its own process. This is the thing that I wish I had known when I was pregnant with my first and with my second, because I made some mistakes there too, as you'll find out when you read chapters three and four about the harsh lesson in reclaiming birth. So I'm just going to read to you the natural birth traps, okay? Because this is one of my favorite chapters, and it actually used to be an introduction until Jenny went and had her empowered birth, and I had to create another chapter. Have you ever wondered why most natural birth plans tend to fail? Why do so many women start off planning to avoid inductions, C-sections, the epidural, and swear up and down that they won't be cut or medicated during their births, and then nine months later, that's exactly what happens? Why is it 
that so many people tell you not to get your hopes up and not to bother with a birth plan. There are so many courses and books out there that tell you that if you just avoid this one thing or do what your doctor tells you or you hire a doula or a midwife that you'll somehow magically get what you want in your birth. I wish that was the case, but the truth is that unless you know what's going on behind the curtain in the birth world, and unless you figured out the loopholes, you could end up like my friend Kate. She was a first-time mom who had done all the things that first-time moms planning natural births are told to do. And she wound up having a C-section and asking herself how the hell it had happened. You're going to hear Kate's story in a moment, but first, I'm going to ask you something. Have you done everything you need to do to ensure you will get the birth you want? How much have you prepared and thought about this birth? What have you already considered? How much are you willing to invest your time and money into making sure it happens? Since you picked up this book, I'm going to guess that you are invested enough that you would pay money for some things that would ensure birth go your way. You might choose to have an out-of-hospital birth and be willing to pay out-of-pocket for a midwife. You might have hired a doula. You might be enrolled in childbirth classes. I have some uncomfortable news. Kate did those things too. She still wound up with a traumatic birth. This isn't because of any failing in her body though. If Kate had known the secrets that I'm going to teach you in this book, she might have had a different outcome. Unfortunately, no one told her those secrets until it was already too late. Many women who have learned what I'm going to tell you have been outraged. They've cried out, why did no one tell me this when I needed to hear it most? Some women have gone their entire adult lives not knowing that the trauma they had in their births didn't have to happen. I've spoken at an event where a woman in her 60s told me that in hearing these secrets, it had triggered her own past birth traumas and she was finally able to find some healing by learning from me. Women in their 80s have thanked me for finally giving them a voice for what they had felt they had been what what they had felt when they had been frightened new mothers. Birth trauma has been going on for a long time and sadly no one will warn you about it. This is because often they don't understand what happened to them, themselves and they have no frame of reference to help you avoid the same fate. The cycle continues generation after generation until someone shares their story you, and until someone shares their story, you won't know how to break this cycle. This is why I wanted to include Kate's story for you because not only is this story powerful, but it holds the key to avoiding the common traps most moms planning a natural birth fall into. Kate's story. Kate was excited. After months of trying to get pregnant, it had finally happened. She had dreamed of this moment for so long and she had envied the beautiful women in the black and white Instagram photos with their babies born lovingly and peacefully at home or at a birth center. She knew that she wanted a completely natural birth, so she did what all newly pregnant mothers would do. She bought books, courses, and attended all the classes. She asked around about midwives and someone pointed her in the direction of a good practice that they had gone to for their own pregnancies. Kate got a list of questions to ask her midwife off the internet and asked about home birth. The midwife told her that as long as Kate stayed low risk, then home birth was an option. Kate was satisfied and hired her midwife on the spot. As Kate got further into her pregnancy, she attended the childbirth classes and practiced the coping techniques for pain management. She and her partner practiced the different positions. She wrote out her birth plan in her final months. As Kate's pregnancy neared the final few weeks, her family and friends grew concerned. They had learned of Kate's plans to have a home birth. It's your first baby, they reasoned. You should be in the hospital in case something goes wrong. Kate attended her appointments in her final month and her midwife assessed her progress, checking her cervix, which was still not showing any signs that labor would start soon. Kate started to feel anxious. She really didn't want to induce her labor. 
Her midwife assured her that they wouldn't have to induce unless Kate went past 41 weeks. And then, if she didn't go into labor by that point, they would have to do something. Kate was informed that the, pol that the policy and regulations of the practice were that all clients needed to birth their babies by 42 weeks or they would risk out of midwife care. Kate panicked. She didn't want to switch to an obstetrician. She didn't want to have to abandon her home birth plans. She didn't want to be induced or even set foot in the hospital. Desperate for a way to get labor going, Kate asked every online pregnancy group for help. She tried exercise, sex, dates, spicy food, walking, acupuncture, acupressure, evening primrose oil, red raspberry leaf tea, and she even considered castor oil and midwife's brew. When she was still pregnant at 41 weeks, her midwife suggested a membrane sweep. Kate agreed. That night, she had a lot of cramping. Her mucus plug had come loose, and she wondered if labor was starting. She called her midwife and was informed that her contractions were still too far apart, and to call back when they were closer together, lasted longer than a minute, and were more intense. Kate had a restless night, and by morning the contractions had stopped. She was told it was false labor. You had a membrane sweep yesterday, her midwife reminded her. Sometimes that triggers labor-like contractions. We can try again in a few days. Kate agreed. She was desperate to get into labor before she would risk out of midwife care. The second sweep didn't work either. Kate endured another restless night, and by morning she was exhausted and running out of time. Some people just don't go into labor on their own, her mother told her. I went overdue with you too. Induction isn't really that bad. You'll be fine. Kate agreed to an induction at 41 weeks and five days. Her midwife assured her that she would be there for the birth and that they could still make the hospital a home-like environment for her. Because Kate's cervix still hadn't started to dilate on its own, the first step was to ripen it with prostaglandins. Contractions began and Kate was already feeling a lot of discomfort. She didn't like being in the bed, but now that she was being induced, she was informed that continuous monitoring was necessary to ensure that the induction wasn't too stressful on the baby. After a few hours, she couldn't take it anymore. The midwife said that Kate had only dilated one centimeter and they needed her to be four centimeters before they could start the next step of the induction process. Kate agreed to have an epidural so that she could have some relief. She slept a few hours and when she woke up, she was informed that things still had not progressed and that the next step would be to break her waters and give her something to get things going. She was told that it was oxytocin and that it would help her have her baby sooner. Kate didn't want to agree, but she also knew that her body wasn't doing what it was supposed to do and that she had run out of options. Home birth was out of the question now and the induction process had already started. The nurse administered the oxytocin through the IV and Kate was thankful that the epidural could be topped up because those contractions lasted for much longer than a minute and were one on top of the other. A few hours later, the doctor came in the room. There's still no progress, he said. Your baby is in distress. We have to perform a C-section. Kate was devastated. Her entire plan for a natural birth had fallen apart and she didn't know how or why this was happening. She'd done everything right. She'd hired a midwife and taken all the birth classes. She'd taken care of herself, eaten well, and exercised. It didn't make any sense at all. <sighs> she cried silently as she lay on the operating table. She hadn't wanted any of this. She'd simply wanted to birth her baby at home in the water, surrounded by people who loved and supported her. After birth, Kate felt like her body had betrayed her. She wondered if she would ever get that beautiful home birth now that she'd had a cesarean. And that's, that's the end of Kate's story, or is it? So the thing is, is that Kate's story is very similar to a lot of the stories that a lot of my clients have, where they were told that they didn't go into labor on their own, or that their bodies didn't dilate or that some other issue came up, so that's why they had a C-section. 
And in the end, they were told that they couldn't have a bee back. And what they've done by working with me and by going through the system that is inside of this book, which again is on Amazon, what they were able to do was get those beautiful birth experiences. And that's what I really want for you too. Because, you know, Kate's story is so familiar, isn't it? Like maybe there were parts of it that made you think, oh my gosh, I've heard this story before. Or, oh my gosh, that happened to me. And no, I'm not psychic. I've just been doing this for the last 10 years. And some of the story is my story. And some of it is the stories of my other clients. Like this is so sim this is so familiar. You'll find this in any mom group. And the fact is, is that there's so much more under the surface. Now, maybe you already know some of what Kate did wrong. And if you do, put in the comments. Tell me. Tell me what you think happened that led to Kate's cesarean. And I'll tell you if you're right. And whoever's closest and gets all of the traps that Kate fell into, then I will probably reach out to you and I will give you a copy of your empowered birth as a gift. But I'm only going to give it to one person. So you've got to come in fast and first come, first serve. If you can get every single one of those traps, and there's quite a few of them, and you can tell me every single one, I'll gift you a copy of your empowered birth. In fact, I'm going to print out a paperback. I will autograph it for you. I will give you an inscription and I will mail it to your house for you to actually have it as a physical copy of this book. Okay. But again, if you want to know, if you want to get this, you've got to be the first one to tell me all of the traps that Kate fell into. All right. And Otherwise, like go and get your copy. Go get your copy of this book. And I will be reading more from this book because like, there's just so much here. There's so much here that you're going to want to pick up a copy just to be able to go through it. It's very, very short. It's the exercises that really help you. And then in addition to that, there's also bonuses that you get with this book. So you'll be able to go and get that. Once you read this book, it will give you the URL. And you can go in and you can get your bonuses. And they also help you to get the birth you want without having to fight, beg, or compromise. There's even a complimentary birth plan mini course that you can also opt into. And the birth plan mini course is based off of what I've taught my clients. Again, it's like the first step in my program. And then what they're able to do with that is they use that as their birth vision. And you'll learn more about that when you get your empowered birth. So... Thank you so much for following me. And if you found this helpful, if you really loved what was in this chapter that I just shared with you and you want to know more, or you think that others might really enjoy hearing this, then send them it into the community. Let them know about this book. This has been a labor of love for the last 10 years. It's everything that I've learned as a birth worker a birth advocate as a mother who went through and had an empowered birth and built the system and then taught other moms how to do the same thing. So I didn't even trust my own system until after I helped other moms do the same thing that I did. I was like, well, maybe it's just a fluke. Maybe I just got it. But no, no, this actually works. This is the most powerful thing you could possibly learn and the best thing you could do for your birth experience to be able to get that beautiful natural birth you're envisioning, or at least make your own decisions so that you know that if you did choose a cesarean, that it was actually your choice. It wasn't something that you felt you had no choice, and it wasn't something where you got tricked into it. It's like, this is what I chose, and I feel good about it, and I understand why it had to happen this way, and I'm okay. I'm not traumatized. And that's so different than what a lot of people end up thinking, oh, I had to have a C-section, my body doesn't work, later to find out they got tricked and they fell into those natural birth traps like Kate did, because I'm going to give you one of the hints of what Kate did wrong. And it's, it's very simple, is that she believed that her body really wasn't working. And she ended up trusting the experts over her own intuition. She knew that this was not the right path for her. But because of the way that the system was set up, she fell into all of those traps one after the other. So if you can tell me all of them that she fell into by listening to the story or...
go and get your copy of your empowered birth. And then what you can do from that point is I'll give you something else instead. Um, if you already have a copy or you can just send me your book and then I'll autograph it, like whatever you want to do. I have so many things that I can give you. I have courses, I have other things that I've created and really like this is a choose your own adventure and you basically get the birth you want that is completely unique to you that nobody else is going to have your blueprint no more checklists no more templates no more trying to ask the mom groups you're going to have your intuition and know exactly what you need for your birth so that's that's all I have for you today thank you again for listening and Go out and spread the word about empowered birth. Love you.